I'm like, hey, Connor, I was just talking to Uncle Mike. He's up camping right now. And like, there's like a three second delay. And then Becky just started to laugh hysterically. And I'm like, what? She looked and she goes, when you said Uncle Mike, I immediately thought Mike Reeves. And then when you said camping, she goes, I immediately thought there's no way in hell Mike would ever go camping. A hundred percent. No. Glamping. Yeah. I'm a glamper. That's <laughs> that's what we went into then about how you would glamp. Yeah. First off, I'd get frustrated trying to set up a tent. Yeah. But I could see you as the type of person who would spend hundreds of dollars on like the high end camping stuff. And then get frustrated and then just decide to just go to the holiday. I'd, I'd need like a, a bed that blew up itself. Yeah. Like in the woods. Yeah. No. Uh, a tent that like it, you throw it and it oh, yeah. boom, pops yeah. up. Kind of like uh, like anything you would see on a cartoon. All the cool gadgets. So I look sweet. Like I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Just, poof, pops up. Yeah. Press my remote. And my bed just. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be, I, I still couldn't see you doing it though. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. It sounds horrible. Uh, yeah, Walking Dead, I've been watching that, and I'd be in big, big trouble. Yeah. The survivor skills, like, yeah. I mean, I'd probably figure it out, but. It's amazing what you could do when you have to, but no, I'd be dead before. Yeah. I did a drive by one handoff with my homeless buddy. Cause yeah. It was green. Oh. It was perfection. Nice. Just. Yeah, there was a new lady at my end. A lady? Yeah. Huh. Her, her sign said that cybercrime or whatever. Gave her a buck. I only had one single on me. So, a buck's good. Yeah, it's good. Not, I'm not I'm not Matt Benz. Yeah, <laughs> it's just bread money. <laughs> <laughs> he gives him a ten spot and a loaf of whole grain, you know, whole grain Sara Lee. Just passing out free bread. Yeah, yeah. He's probably not even. He's still working, huh? Yeah. Poor guy. Yeah. So it happens. You know, he's got to get his own route. Are you still DJing, Tevin? Uh, yep, yep. Every Sunday at Union, Sunday nights, and then uh, random places around the city filling in, and then weddings every once in a while. Weddings, nice. Yeah. You'd be a sweet wedding DJ. I feel like. What do you What do you play? Whatever they want, or you just yeah, like look here. I'm. If they don't give me anything, then it's like a bunch of like old school, or not like old old school, but like mid two thousands like hip hop R and B type stuff. And then the chicken Bruno, dance. Bruno Mars. No, no, I haven't played the chicken dance yet. Usually I only play like the super super stereotypical, like Cotton Eye Joe type stuff. If somebody comes and asks for it, the electric slide. Cotton Eye Joe. Oh God! If you ever played that, somebody, if I ever get married at mine, play. that song just feels racist to me. It do, yeah. right when you said it, I'm like, yeah. Is it because yeah. it's cotton there's, in it? There's, there's something about it. Where did you come from? Where did you go? <clears throat> I could see Tevin. I could see Tevin, you know, jumping off the DJ stage to get the crowd going to whatever, the Macarena, like the hype man. Yeah. Whatever, whatever. T- I had to teach a room full of white people how to do the Cupid Shuffle once because they all just stared at me like they had no idea. What, what is the Cupid Shuffle? Oh my gosh! It's uh, down, down, do your dance, do. Your oh yeah. Dance. Oh okay. okay. But yeah, I couldn't do that. We're gonna get dancing right into this episode here very shortly. Brought to you, as always, by our good friends over at Bricks Boatworks. So make sure everybody heads over to Br- BricksBoatworks.com for all of your boat winterizing needs. Thank you, Tevin. Good old Bricks. <clears throat> what do you get when you put two Minnesotans and a guy from Wisconsin together? Twist. The Week in Sports Talk. Get ready for some sports chatter where there is sure to be laughing arguing, and maybe even crying. Now, now, here are your hosts, Mike Reeves, Matt Benz, and Greg Green Bay Bauman. Oh, that video never gets old. No, love it. Besides that shirt. Yeah, we should almost do like a reversion of it. Tevin's not, he can't do it, he said. Yeah. So we're we're going to have to. That's, yeah, that's above my pay. We're going to have to live with that <laughs> for life or downgrade. We got a hell of a deal out of it. It's actually the so. only reason why Matt's still on the show. <laughs> yeah. Because we, <laughs> we can't cut him out of that video. <laughs> Would you be able to do that, Tevin? Just cut him out? We, we could do like a very funny, like rough looking replacement of Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and, just, and then you just have to talk over it now, right. like... Ken Waters. <laughs> <laughs> we just, just where Matt's faces just have the cardboard doge. I would love a Ken Waters on the show. Yeah. 
Here's your. He could be the lead. He could sit here. Yeah. So Ken, how's it going? Good guys. Yeah, he'd oh. have the perfect hair. <laughs> yeah. Wake up and it's just. Pfft. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Well, welcome in Twist Nation, episode seventy-five, staycation. That's for GBG. This is his staycation mm-hmm. day. Yeah. And for all you at home, it's a weekend. It's a staycation. Tune it into Twist. It's like the perfect weekend to just get shit done. That's really not like there's no like time frame on it because like starting next weekend everyone's gonna be you know going into the whole holiday holidays and we got to get ready for Thanksgiving and this and that so this is like the perfect weekend where if you just got stuff that's just been sitting around that you just haven't gotten to get her done get her done speaking of get her and her done um, well we might have if I remember correctly did we use the last of the initials last week no I, we didn't know because you uh, I think you found one I found one. We, you know, yes, last week would have been the 30th different combo, according to my records. Uh, let's just double check. Oh, I guess it depends on how many cards are in there. Yeah, I don't know. But there were a lot of episodes I wasn't at, and I was working. If I wasn't here, I was working, which means you just grab one of those with the asterisk, because I don't remember. I don't have it in front of me. Right. And I definitely won't remember. <laughs> Yeah, there was that week I missed that uh, the, mach- the machine Mike Steen was here. <laughs> and you guys did that combo like three weeks earlier. I remember you said that before, and I had no idea. There was one where I kind of sat there and thought, I'm like, and I still, my I told you my brain just shuts down as soon as Tevin starts talking. And I watched that one because I wanted to see how Steen would do. And... Not very good. Nah, he was. He did a lot of. He did a lot of drinks and. <laughs> oh yeah, we made him. <laughs> made him a made him a cocktail at ten a.m. Right. All right. I found one that I believe we have not done. There we go. We'll just ask so, Greg once he announced it. Here. I'm looking. I'm looking at the initials game results and. Oh fuck me! Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> if it was O S, that would be hilarious because that's one of the ones that we did twice. It was no, it was ES, and it was not only was it one we've already done. It's one that, well, I mean, as most of these are, it's one that GBG won. Whatever. E- yes, we need to order two and three. Yeah, I'll do that this weekend. Uh, I believe. I heard Corey talking about it. Yeah, he just he. Yeah, I heard him the other day. He said that he's got to um, mail them out to the Kickstarter people first, and then it's the online orders, which should be. I can't imagine that's going to take that long. No, he said order now, get them before Christmas. Is that what he said? Mm-hmm. Okay. So if I, I'll just have to come up with some games until we get the new ones. Yeah, I'll order, th- I'll order two and three, and then I just won't even open. I'll just bring it here. That's pretty good that uh, we've made it last this long. Yeah. How are we doing back there? Uh, we're doing, I think, okay. I think. You think oh, you found no. it? Just no. kidding. No. <laughs> like we, we're on the air. We're, yeah. No, this is riveting for our listeners. Yeah. Um, but I think it's tight on. Oh, we might have a winner. Nope, nope. And last one, definitely we've done this one. Was it WC? Because we did that one last week. No, uh, yep. Nope, we've officially done them all. Yes. We've officially done them all. All right, we'll either grab one that's asterisk that Greg wasn't at. All right, we will grab one that Doge actually won. Wow. Uh-oh. That's. <clears throat> so we will not just fucking where this card go. <laughs> I still find that hilarious. Right. <laughs> that cardboard cutout one. I know what's funny is that you and Matt have both had plenty of weeks where you're like killing it yeah. with it or without me here. And there was a week where both of you guys were so out of it that a cardboard cutout one. Mm-hmm. And for anybody at home wondering what those initials were, the initials were PM. PM. Episode 48. Dome. Oh, yeah, that was Found ages ago. Victory. So we're going to see if we can right the wrongs of Ben's and, and Mike today. I have n- I got nothing coming into my head. I never do. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, here we go. Initials P M P M. Item number one. Clue number one. In 1990, was connected to catatonic patients. Clue number two. In 1988, was connected to a kid's wish. 
Clue number three, in 1992, was connected to groundbreaking female athletes. Clue number four, her first name is Carol. Clue number five, she has a brother named Gary. Greg, Penny Marshall. Ding, ding, ding. GVG. Penny Marshall? Who's the... Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wonder why Doge won. Oh, my God. And I think the whole women, <laughs> women athlete, I think that was a reference to a league of their own. Oh, that was okay. that, that, got, that got me on the right track. And I definitely didn't. That was probably one of the tougher ones in this. <laughs> so. A league of their own, that started the Me Too movement, I feel like. That's a great flick. Tom Hanks. Yep. Madonna's in that too, Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, I could do without Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people can do without <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell. All right, item number two in PM. Clue number one has hosted Saturday Night Live. Clue number two has voiced a bull named Guapo in 2017's Ferdinand. Clue number three. Has a connection to Omaha. Clue number four. Mike. Post Malone. Uh, Post Malone? <laughs> oh, my gosh. GBG. Were you, <laughs> do you want to hear the rest of the clues? Or you no, to... GBG. Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning is oh. correct. <laughs> Post Right. It was a PM. And now everybody wants, I think we found our answer to why Doge won, <laughs> won this last time. All right. Item number three. Oh. GBG is up two to zero. Clue number one. Debuted in 1980. Clue number two. Was a social phenomenon. Clue number three. Appeared in a 2015 Adam Sandler film. Clue number four. Often seen eating apples, oranges, strawberries, and cherries. Clue number five. Constantly being chased by ghosts. Greg, Pac-Man. Correct. GBG. Three, Mike, zero. Cool. Doge, <laughs> the defending champion, also to <laughs> zero. I, I only had pancake mix. <laughs> well, because you already used Post Malone. <laughs> right. And I'm just going to do you a solid and let you know that pancake mix is not <laughs> one of the answers to any of these cards. All right. Oh, man. Let's, let's see if we can get one that you will get. Here we go. <laughs> that one that Mike will get. I think We're going to tee one up. And I know Pancake Mix wouldn't be in there, but it's like, oh, PM, <laughs> Pancake Mix. Sweet. Clue number one was seen in Beverly Hills Cop 2. Clue number two found in Holmby Hills, Los Angeles. Clue number three opened in 1927. Clue number four is over 20,000 square feet. Clue number five includes a waterfall, aviary, and grotto. And lastly, clue number six was lo- was the longtime residence of Hugh Hefner. Mike. Mike. Mike was first. Playboy Mansion. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Oh, let's go. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> can have that one. <laughs> Woo! For a second, I thought GBG was going to chime in early. Oh, well. I'm just glad. I never ruined your day. I never beat him to the buzzer though. That so would have ruined good. your day. Oh, the grotto. That's kind of. I think. Well, I think game over now. Mike won. It was yep. Good. Yeah. All right. Next up in PM, clue number one was investigated by the FBI in 2014. Clue number two, connected to maroon and gold in college. Clue number two, or three. His nickname comes from something he shares with approximately 10% of the world's population. Clue number four. Appeared as himself in a 1996 Kevin Costner film. Greg, Phil Mickelson. That is correct. Phil Mickelson. Maroon and gold. Arizona State. Yep. I always think Gophers win. Yeah, USC, Gophers, Arizona State does not pop into my head when I hear that. All right. Next up for PM. They're more of a cardinal. Yeah. GBG with four. Mike with one. Clue number one. 
Many include a storyline. Clue number two, usually have four legs. Clue number three, often include ramps. Clue number four, has a connection to the to the who. Clue number five, include plungers, bumpers, and targets. Greg, pinball machine. You know what, Greg? If I can find our button. That's three words. How's pinball machine is not two three words. Well, apparently pinball is one word. Your money. You know what else? You're a Ugh. big winner tonight. You're a big winner. GBG. Well, congratulations. Good times. Good, Good times. Good. Sit down, Doge. Oh. Doge has been dethroned. Yeah, at least the cardboard lost. And I got one, and it was Playboy Mansion. So The one I was thinking of didn't even show up. I didn't And have it any. wasn't Post Malone. It was um, Paul McCartney. Paul, Paul McCartney was in here. Oh, it was? Yep. Okay. We tried to take oh, it. Oh, yeah, ha- yeah, I was thinking about that one, too. <laughs> Next up, we've got the twist topics Ooh. of the week. I'm looking forward to this one. Got a, got a, lot, of, a, lot, of good, got a lot of good takes. Bring it. All right. Topic. Whoops. How do you know what they are, Greg? Jeez. I'm just excited. A lot, lots going on. Lots going on in the world. He prepped for the show today. <laughs> a lot of prepping. Let's pull this back up from a disaster today. Topic number one, the news, the big news from the NFL this week was OBJ get, teaming up with the already star-studded cast out in L.A. to join the Rams. What are your guys' thoughts on the move for OBJ out to L.A.? Well, first off, I want to hear Greg's thoughts on trading for him in our dynasty. <laughs> are you I, happy? Uh, no. I when I, I tr- when I traded for him, he was still a Cleveland Brown. Correct. I thought we at, knew he was leaving at yes. the time, so you were making an educated guess. I thought he was going to go to the Patriots. Okay, and that's why I made the trade because he could have been the definite number one. And I thought, okay, as a fallback, he might go to the Packers or you know a team like the Saints, and then be their number one or in Packers' case, number two. I don't like this. I don't think there's an there's only one football they can use in L.A. I don't wonder you know you you can't bring out two footballs when you have that many All Stars or Pro Bowlers. What do I think about the trade? I think that it was calculated for him and his agent to go to a winning team where he's going to get exposure longer because common sense tells you that in the NFC they're the one team that steps aside. So they're the one team that's probably going to make it to the NFC Championship game. So they have more exposure. It's a one-year deal. He's looking to have a couple of big plays and then sign a three or four-year contract next year with whoever else. So what I think people miss when players are targeting teams is not necessarily just the fit of the team. It's the comfortability of where you're at. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, you're, you're at the stadium two days a week, Yeah, you know, and then what are you doing? Yeah. You know, so for a team like green Bay, yeah, you're playing with Aaron Rodgers, but for Odell Beckham, who is probably, I think he's got the most followers out of any wide receiver in the league, Yeah, you know, so he's, he's a superstar, Yeah, you know, so where, you know, you can go to Milwaukee, you can call Giannis and go to a Bucks game, but like what are you doing when you're not playing, when you're not at the stadium? He's already has a house in LA. Yeah. You know, so he's going literally home. So is it the best football fit? No. Mm-hmm. No. But is it the best fit for Odell in his life? Yeah. And that's why I think he did it. You know, he's a diva. He's got a lot of a lot of back end stuff going on. Mm-hmm. I just think he said, look. They're they're loaded. This is a. I might not be the number one guy. Mm-hmm. I might be the fallback guy, but it's going to work out for the rest of this year. Yeah, you know, and I'm still Odell, and I think I'm still going to get a good, you know, landing spot and contract, and I can choose again mm-hmm. next year. Yeah, so. and I think that's what it was. I think because he could have gone to New Orleans, but to your credit, because that's where he's from, yeah. Louisiana. But at the same time, then you have Trevor Simeon throwing you the ball, right? And you're still he's from there, yeah, but he doesn't have a house there, yeah. You know, you're living in a hotel for the rest of the year, and it's yeah. like, this is just, I don't want to be in Cleveland. Yeah. I, I'm going home. Yep. So, 
Yeah. Also feels like a good way to kind of rebrand himself, going from like a selfish player, going somewhere where he's like you guys are saying, not the number one. Mm-hmm. Kind of get rid of that. Stuff. Yeah, that's a good point. But also, then we'll move on to clue number or clue number two. Topic <laughs> number two: Cam Newton. Whoever says you can't go home is a liar because he is going back to Carolina where he will now assumably start over Sam Darnold and whoever else they're trying to trash out there, P.J. Williams. What do you guys think about Cam making the return to Carolina? First of all, I thought I saw the funniest meme on one of the many sports podcasts, things on Facebook, where it was the announcement was that Sam Darnold had an incomplete fracture, and underneath it it said he can't even complete a a fracture. (laughs) Um, I think this is perfect for him, for Cam, because to your credit, to saying that you're going someplace comfortable, you get to play again. And let's be honest, if you are a quarterback who's competent in the NFL, you can play into your late 30s, early 40s as a backup. I mean, Ryan Fitzpatrick is 57 years old. Yeah. You know, and it's so if he wants to, you know, he's going to play this year, he comes back, he comes when uh, Christian McCaffrey's healthy again. You never know. The NFC has five top teams and then garbage after that. Two of those garbage teams have to make the playoffs. Yeah. So I think it it was best case scenario for him. They're on the bubble. So I I like what it did from, you know, the GM and the coach saying to their team, we're not out. Yeah. We're fighting. So we're going to go get a guy. You know, I I love that. I wish the Vikes, you know, had that mentality. It's Mm -hmm. like, eh, we'll just kind of teeter totter and. We don't care. If I'm a Carolina Panther fan, I'm pulling out my cam number one. Mm-hmm. I'm Superman in. Yep. You know, he's not the cam of old. Who cares? Yeah. But it's a good fit for him. You know, I think he's not going to start this week. He's got to get, you know, comfortable. It's a new system, mm-hmm. new coaching staff. It's not like he just comes in and knows the playbook. It's a whole different team. Yeah. Um, but I, I do like it. I mean, cam was in my lifetime, besides like maybe Vince Young, was the most electrifying college football player I'd ever watched. Yeah. You know, that was he was phenomenal at Auburn. So mm-hmm. coming out number one overall pick, I mean, he he didn't last very long. I mean, he was on top for what, six years maybe? Yeah. But yeah, I hope so. I don't see Cam ever as that long term veteran backup quarterback guy. But mm-hmm. honestly, I didn't think I thought once he was done it with the Patriots and but I mean he went out, he got vaccinated. He's mm-hmm. like, look, I want to play and he did all the right things, so if he can show up and play well, maybe he'll have a longer career. We'll yep. see. Good for him. Uh, yeah, moving on to somebody that didn't allegedly do the right things. Our guy Dalvin Cook here with the Minnesota Vikings had the assault scandal slash where he was a victim, she was a victim. Is he done here in Minnesota, especially after what we went through with Adrian Peterson? Or You didn't even say it how I typed it, which is was so clever. Da- is Dalvin cooked? <laughs> Yes. We're screwed. Okay. You know, I know, first of all, I hate when I say things and then people interpret it the way they want. Or anyone, not just me, anyone. Because do I think that he's using your word cooked? Do I think he's done? No. And here's why. There's no video evidence. Right. You know, I'm not saying that that makes it right or less offensive. I'm not saying that we need it in all cases. I'm saying that when you have physical evidence of abuse, then you don't get forgiven and you have to move on. In Ray Rice, Adrian Peterson, I mean, there were, you know, obviously he was a minor, but there's, you know, evidence of him whacking his son and there being scars. Well, there wasn't video. Not video, I'm sorry. Pictures, you know, there's... You know, but there's also... There's that picture. There's the picture of the girl that is circulating. There's a picture of her and there's messages. Mm -hmm. So those aren't, to your point, as big as Ray Rice beating his wife in an elevator. Yeah. Or, you know, but Kareem Hunt, there was a video. He wasn't cooked. Yeah. You know, she was a racist white girl. Like, she's lucky she probably didn't get a little little more, in my opinion, but... I just think that... I just don't think this is escalating to level of a player who can't move past it. I I don't know. I mean, she was, here's the thing. Here's the other thing too, is she was married and this was, yeah. And so now his side of the story is extortion and blah, blah, blah. So it's not as clear cut. Yeah. 
you know, it was it, it was also a year ago. Yeah. Yep. So if you're Delvin Cook and some crazy ex comes into your house, maces you and the two people you have over there, has you at gunpoint, this, that, and the other, and you're not guilty, mm-hmm. didn't do anything wrong. Why would this come out a week ago? Yeah. Why weren't the cops called immediately like this crazy broad showed up at my house with a gun and maced everybody and assaulted me? Yeah. Like, you got nothing to hide. Why were the cops not involved then? Yeah. Because he's guilty. And because he was paying her off for a year Mm -hmm. and stopped. Yeah. And now she's got evidence to be, you know, it's still got to hold up. And will it because there's no video and because she apparently is a nutcase who stabs husbands and... Mm -hmm. Whatever. I don't know, but it's like, I don't think this is as cut and dry, and I think there's a lot of moving parts, and I don't think it, it's going to shine well on him at all. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I was talking to somebody that's in the military, because she's obviously in the, or was in the military, was a sergeant, yep. and, like, the military courts have to get involved, because, like, with her situation is what he was saying. Like, there's a chance that they'll step in, because they have different weird rules and laws that they have to abide by as military members, so he was saying it could get even more sticky and than but just... The, the civil case. The military can't get involved with him. No, it's just with her because okay. it's like she's married, and so like technically they can take her to court and like have stuff for that. And I don't know. He had a bunch, a list of shit that like military rules that are different than general U.S. citizen rules, and so she's possibly gonna he could possibly get dragged into some of those hearings as well. I mean, I just spent 150 bucks on his jersey. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Three months ago That's and then the a, worst part of this. Of course, uh scoring machine Steen messages me like two weeks later, like did you hear the podcast? He's wearing number four next year. It's like Is he really? Yeah. Damn. But it, which is cool. I'll I'll tell it you. is I'll cool. Throw, I'll get a new Dalvin jersey then. Well no, I'll just get a JJ. Yeah, or something else, but it just shows that that's why I bought two jerseys that day. I bought a Delvin and I bought a Fran Tarkington because Fran, the man. Yeah, you can't go wrong with you Fran. You can't go wrong. So. All right. And then the last twist topic of the day. Do you believe Tiger Woods won't return if he can't play well? Or will re- you worded this? Re- is Tiger coming back if he's not his old self or will he call it quits? I feel like this is the end of the Tiger era. I think that he's going to for at least the next five seven years do his appearances do the um him and tom brady against phil mickelson and aaron Rodgers type stuff i think he's going to keep doing that because he's never going to stop golfing but i don't see him as someone who's going to keep showing up to augusta augusta fighting to make the cut i don't see him being that person he just he's he's an all or nothing kind of guy yeah, he's one of the most competitive human beings on this earth. So if he can't compete, he won't. Mm-hmm. You know, will he do the money stuff? Maybe. I mm-hmm. guess I don't necessarily totally agree with that part. But I think he'll be back. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think there's anybody tougher out there. So if, if he can get back, he will. And I'd like to see him. It's good for golf. Yeah. I mean, and Phil Mickelson just won a major at the age of 50, and Tiger's 45. Tiger will be 46 at the end of December. Yeah. So he mm-hmm. still has a couple of years left in him where he could win maybe one or two more majors. Yeah, he didn't lose a limb. Yeah. You does, know, just get back, get recovered. Does he? Is he going to just rehab until he turns 50 and then just join the senior tour and no. clean house? <laughs> <laughs> that That's what's so funny is Phil Mickelson was doing like a part-time senior tour, champions tour, they call it schedule and he comes back and wins a major it's like you know it's like doge winning on initials game (laughs) (laughs) he's just getting tuned up to get ready all right all right well that's all i've got for the twist topics of the week and now we'll move kick it over to mike for the history segment very good thanks tevin on this day in history november 13th that's the right date right yeah. Yeah, we're coming live November 13th. NBC Multicast Studios, Northeast Minneapolis. We're on the good side of Minneapolis. 1789, Benjamin Franklin writes, Nothing is certain but death and taxes. Ain't that the truth, Ben? Huh. 1933, the first modern sit down strike by Hormel Meat Packers was here in Austin, Minnesota. 1933. Good, good old Austin. 1942, minimum draft age lowered from 21 to 18 hmm. in the U.S. Can you imagine that? Oh. Being drafted? Oh, God. That'd be the worst. Yeah, worst nightmare. <laughs> Ever. 1960, fire in movie theater kills 152 children in Spain. 
That's why you can't yell fire in a movie theater. Yikes. People freak out. 1969, Vice President Spiro Agnew accuses network TV news departments of bias and distortion. <laughs> Nothing's changed. 1970, 1973, Oakland A's Reggie Jackson wins AL MVP unanimously. 87, Sonny and Cher perform together for the final time, singing I Got You, Babe, on Late Night with David Letterman. I got you, babe. It's a great song. 91, Boston Red Sox Roger Clemens wins the Cy Young Award. 1994, Dale Earnhardt, not Junior, Big Dale, wins the 44th NASCAR Sprint Cup. 1995, Goldeneye with Pierce Brosnan is debuted. Is he the best uh, Bond? I don't know. I, Sean Connery. No, it's Daniel Craig. Nah, nah. Daniel Craig for sure. Hands down, Daniel Craig. He's just a dapper, good looking fella. <sighs> Who was uh, Idris Elba? Wasn't he? Suppo- he was supposed to be a Bond. He'd be like, a hell of a Bond. Yeah, because yeah, that was like I want to say like five years ago it was rumored he was going to do one. So he Idris is on a Netflix film, brand new, called "The Harder They Fall," mm-hmm. and it's basically I, I just watched it last week. It's uh, like a cowboy flick, okay, with like all all black cast, mm-hmm. and so the music is like reggae and rap and it's it's weird because you don't expect that from like a you know a western flick it's damn good nice you talk about uh, the harder they fall yeah that's what i just said oh yeah sorry i was tuned out for the first half i'm saying we're, we're t- Mike's giving props to a black actor and Tevin too. Yeah, out. all black cast and Tevin's just. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Have you seen it? Uh, no, I have to watch it. It's on my list. Yeah, though. no, watch it. It's good. Speaking of black guys, 1997, Ken Griffey Jr. Unanim- unanimously wins the MVP. God, Apparently, this is the day you give out the MVP award in baseball. Yep. 99, Toy Story 2 is premiered. God, great flick. 2001, War on Terrorism. In the first such act since World War II, U.S. President George W. signs an executive order allowing military tribunals against foreigners suspected of connections to terrorist acts or planned acts on the U.S. of A. 2002, Eminem releases Lose Yourself from the soundtrack 8 Mile. First rap song to win Academy Award Best Original Song. I was b- banging that hard in 02. 2018 trial of El Chapo begins in New York. Huh. I saw a documentary on that about the guy who was like tracking him for years. It's pretty cool. Where's that on? Uh, where was it on? I'm sure it's on net. I think it was on Netflix. We watched it when we were in Puerto Rico. So that was like basic cable there, but I think it's on Netflix. But it does remind me, when you talked about Sonny and Cher, last night I took Connor to see the new Venom movie. Oh, yeah. The, the chickens in that are named Sonny and Cher. Oh. But um, that's what made me think of it. Great movie. If you liked the first one. I did like the first one. You'll love this one because, not to ruin anything, but now that they know each other, yeah, it's so much better. Funnier. Yeah. It's a lot funnier. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. Oh. Well, good. A couple plugs, a show, or no, a couple movies. Yeah. Good weekend to see it. Yep. Go, go see it. All right. That's all you got? Yep. Yeah, you're learned. If you'd pay you, attention. You're learned. All right. Now we are moving on. GBG. No, we got the power rankings. Right. Don't you do the power rankings? You get, you're up first? <laughs> Good, <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, nice save. <laughs> yeah, he is up first. Ten through six. <laughs> ten through six in the power rankings. At number ten, I have the Cleveland Browns. Number nine, the San Diego er, LA Chargers. Eight, the Cowboys, seven, Ravens, six, Bills. Wow. We got the same teams, just different orders. Okay. So I got the Chargers at 10. Uh, Slight win over the Eagles, 27-24. The Browns, I have ahead of them because they smacked around the Bengals, Mm -hmm. 41-16. It was so funny. Benz is like, yeah, I'm I'm real high on the Bengals. This was last Sunday. Unless they lose, then I'm out. (laughs) At eight, I have the Bills, seven Cowboys, six the Ravens. 
it's just, when you said Matt, I was thinking, I looked over at the rankings from our NFL pick em. That's spoken like a guy in last place. Uh, <laughs> at five, I have the Buccaneers. Four, I have the Packers. Three, I have the Titans. Two, the Rams. One, the Cardinals. All right, so our top ten is the same. That might be the first. Wow. I, I still have the Titans out. They're at five. Okay. Seven and two. Uh, Packers four, seven and two. Rams three, seven and one. Bucks at two. Cardinals at one. The Bucks are hard for me mm -hmm. to get out of that spot. Yeah. They're just too good. Yeah. I can't move the Rams past three with getting OBJ. Mm -hmm. You know, the Packers without Aaron lost. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not moving out anytime soon. But the Titans finally creeped in for me with that big win over the Rams. It's just. It's funny this year because, you know, we've been paying attention more because we're doing the top 10. Yep. But I could not tell you, I could not put a month, amount of money that mattered to me. I couldn't put it on any one team and say, you would get 10 to 1 odds that this team makes it to the Super Bowl. So they win the AFC or the NFC. Yeah. I could not with confidence tell you one. The most confident I would be would probably be the Rams because of what happened. But there's chemistry. And, you know, what happens? And they play in a tough division. So it's like, you know, and that's why I put the Titans up so high. Because even though they don't have Derrick Henry, they still keep, keep finding ways to win. This this is the one year where it's like anybody really could get in and win. Mm -hmm. Whereas the past few, it's like, well, yeah, I mean, well, who's the gonna, Chiefs. Yeah, Chiefs and who, yeah. You know, but even that, they look, they're not even in our top 10. Yeah. They look like shit. Yeah. No. Oh. I did like that uh, post I did last week of little Pat Mahomes watching himself in the future. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, there they go. All right. Top 10 power rankings. Do you have the uh, Papa stuff? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I texted him last Good. night. Good. I'm trying to win some money this weekend, so. Right. So, so we, got, we got Papa. Papa Shawnee Sorrow. Papa. So here's what we got. We got another parlay. The old three-teamer. You put $50 of your own money down, you could win $250.38 if you follow the Papa. New England minus one, Tennessee minus two and a half, and Green Bay Greg's own Green Bay Packers mm. minus three. Three-team parlay, New England, Tennessee, and GB, G, uh, Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> All three favorites. Take it. That's Take it to the bank. You put 50 of your own down. You win 250 back. Very good. BetOnline.com. Scooping chips. All right, GBG. Now we got moving over to your NFL Pick'em segment. Okay, so after last week, week nine, we have a little shakeup in the old rankings. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh. In first place, still Mike Reeves <laughs> with a three game lead <laughs> over myself and Tevin, which I put myself ahead of Tevin of for course. alphabetical purposes. <laughs> We are at 23, 21, and 1, and Matt Benz, who takes a lot of pride in calling both of us up, texting throughout the weekend, putting a lot of cheddar. Yeah, he's greasing. Real, real American money is at 22, 22, and 1. So, so he's one behind you guys. He's one behind us, but he ain't, win, he ain't winning any money. No. Yeah. I mean, honestly, he's only one behind us, but it feels a lot further oh, than yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, items in the rearview mirror a lot further back than they appear. <laughs> it's not as close as it's. No. Yeah, he sucks. So going on to week 10, here's what we got. We did this in advance because we didn't want to show we're going to have a show and Matt's not here anyway. So we got the Colts minus 10.5 over the Jaguars. Tevin and I took the Colts. Matt and Mike took the Jaguars. Yeah, that's 10.5 a, a lot. Yeah. Wentz is feeling good, though, this week. So yeah. Well, and I get it, but, I mean, that's – when I see ten and a half, I it's hard for me to. That's why I always go with those the ten and a half, the fourteen. Right, they're half. big, and yeah. it's, you know most NFL games. I don't care which team you are; it's hard to win by more I mean, than ten and a half points. I mean, think about it: they're a ten and a half point underdog, and they just beat the Bills. best team in the AFC. Yeah, nine six. Yeah. <laughs> so we got the Patriots minus two and a half over the Browns. I took the Patriots. The rest of you guys took the Browns. So Greg could... I could pick up a game here. Creep up two games I could pick on up two me. games on you. Then we got the Chiefs at minus two and a half over the Raiders. All of us took the Chiefs. Then we have the Packers minus three and a half. I should have waited a little bit. 
looks like Shawnee got it at three. Packers minus three and a half over the Sea Chickens. I took the pack. The rest of you guys took the Sea Chickens. I, al- I almost took the pack too, but. I just think this is one of those games where Aaron's going to come out and throw for 450 yards. Yeah, but Russell's coming back. Right. But he, okay, there's a big difference between being asymptomatic from COVID and having to sit out and having pins removed from your throwing thumb. What? A Raj didn't have the cove? He had the Rona, but he was asymptomatic. He never felt any symptoms from it. And I believe everything that Aaron Rodgers says on the Pat McAfee show. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Last game, we got the Chargers, three point favorites over the Vikings. All of us took the Chargers. Yeah, I'm so done with the Minnesota Vikings. Just a dumpster you fire. You said it was 100 points, and I'd take the Chargers. Well, that's, a, that's well, aggressive. That's aggressive, but. Still, Basically, though, I agree with that. Still, they, I, I've never, I, I told Mike this analogy, and I heard this on the radio, so I'm not going to take credit for it. But the Minnesota Vikings are like when you go to your, you're getting ready to go to your 25 year high school reunion, and there was this smoke show that everyone loved, and everyone was excited. You and your group of boys are going to the reunion, and you're all excited to see what that person is like, Vicky, that, that yeah. girl's like. And then you find out that she's working like two part-time jobs. She's got four kids by three different guys, and her husband is, you know, doing whatever to make ends meet. And you're like, I had such higher expectations for you. Is she big, too? Probably. Yeah. yeah. And it, that's, <laughs> that's the Minnesota Vikings. Because I don't care if she's got eight kids from seven different guys working two part-time jobs, one at the dollar store, one at Walgreens. She's still a smoke show. But that's that's the Minnesota Vikings. Yes. Because on paper, you would think that they're like an 11-6 and six team. That's what I had them at. Yeah. And then you put the coaching staff in place and don't let Kurt Cousins throw the ball, and your defense sucks for defensive-minded coach, and you end up at 3-5 and five, eight games into the season. Well, very good. So we're going to – this will transition into mine too, but we, we'll have the next two weeks off. Mm-hmm. So we won't be back for three weeks. So there's going to be a lot of shakeup in a that. A lot of movement. And fantasy football, Tevin. Yep. I think will be decided Yeah. by the time we get back. So a lot of intrigue. And it's uh, it's been a hell of a season. We're in the last week before our two-week championship. Mm -hmm. Benz beat me. Whoa. Yep. Whoa. To go to five and four and to drop me to five and four. Whoa. Tevin. Yep. Beat Greg. Yep. Both of you guys are at four and five. So we're two five and fours, one four and or two four and fives going into the last week. So it's anybody. Which is funny because Ben started 0 and 4. Started 0 and 4. So Tevin is facing me in week 10 and GBG and Ben. So if I win, I'm in. If Ben's wins, he's in. If you guys both win, it's a four way tie. Wow. And I got to go back and add it all up. So a lot of intrigue here. It's going to be nuts. Nice. I can't believe it came down to the last week. That's funny. But uh, it's been a good season. So. We should know by the time we get back, I believe, mm-hmm. right? Or will the le- the week we come back? No, because this week will be week 10. So tomorrow's week 10. Yep. And then the next two weeks. Week 11 and week. Okay, yeah. so we'll know. Yeah. We'll know when we'll we're back. You'll know, champion. Twist Nation. You'll be able to crown a champion. Who the champ is. And loser has to polar plunge, correct? Or losers? All, all three. The champ doesn't plunge. Ben's won last year. He didn't even show. Yeah. <laughs> this year that this year the champ will be videotaping it. All right. All uh, right, now we move on from fantasy football to fantasy basketball. All right. So Benzie and I faced off this week. I beat him to remain undefeated. And he's off to another great start. 0 and 3. But as we've seen that he'll just win the next six. Doesn't mean anything. GBG took Tevin down. Damn it. To go to two and one. And Tevin is at one and two. So I'm off to a flaming hot. Start. I'm not trying to uh, to run. Isn't this the run one? Yeah. No. Oh yeah, yeah. This is the the three mile whatever. Yeah. Five k. Five k. Yeah, because this one is the eating challenge. That's the eating. Yep. Oh, that's gonna be fun. And that's only for one person. Dead last. Yep. Yep. Dead last eats a dog. But let's be honest. 
<laughs> Regardless of where I finish, I'm going to do the challenge. You know, well, we Matt. don't even know what with it Matt. is. We'll just figure it out once whoever loses, loses. Yeah, they'll get to pick one, but it's got to be something that's advertised. Yeah. It can't be, you know, I'm going to go somewhere and eat, you know, whatever. No, it's got to be listed as a challenge where you could win a T-shirt or right. a free meal or whatever. I'll say, and if any of the listeners out here the greater Twin Cities area know of any eating challenges at hit restaurants, up. hit us up. Put it in the comments, and maybe we'll do your eating contest. I love it. And we could bring you with, depending yeah, on who you are. Yeah, we'll do do a do a live stream, <laughs> live twist episode from the restaurant. If you're some psycho who is commenting on our show last week from the Philippines, we're probably not going to invite yeah. you. <laughs> you can come and pay. All right. Now we are moving on to Would You Rather. Yes. All right. All right. First up, Would You Rather. True. Oh, here we go. Would you rather always have a mullet haircut or a ponytail haircut? A mullet. Yeah, I could rock a mullet. And, yeah, I couldn't do a ponytail. I just... No. I mean, I did when I was, like, in college. I bet but it was did. shaved on the sides, so it looked like a... How far like back a, did like it go? A, oh, it went far. It was like a dust buster. Oh, God. So you could... It had a handle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need <Jeez>. pictures. <laughs> I need pictures. Oh, my gosh. Would you rather always oh. have bad gas or always have really dry mouth? Oh, dry mouth. Yeah, dry mouth. Because I, I drink enough. I drink a lot of water. Bad yeah. gas, that's going to ruin friendships. And it's always, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Would you rather be a high school teacher or a clown? High school teacher. They're kind of the same. But... Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> They're so opposite ends of the spectrum. Like, hmm, a teacher or a clown? <laughs> yeah, I'll be a teacher, shaping yeah. young minds. Yes, right. Because yeah, in high school teachers like you can also then like, oh, I'll coach high school football, something like that. Yeah, like, right. Who would actually like clown. literally want to be a clown? A serial killer. Yeah. <laughs> would you rather be forced to dance all day, every day, until you get a perfect score on Dancing with the Stars, or be forced to eat mashed potatoes until you get a perfect score on Beat the Chef? Mashed potatoes. I'm a big mashed potato guy. Eat mashed potatoes. And I can't dance. How do you get a perfect score by eating mashed potatoes? Oh, it's just you have to practice at the chef thing until right. you're good at it. But you have to eat mashed potatoes until you get to that point. Right. I, I'm gonna. You're the one dance. that emailed me these. I'll do the mashed potatoes. I'm gonna dance. It's easier to perfect a cooking dish than it is a dance. Yeah. Uh, a dance. Yeah, I'm a six foot ladies, four white guy. Ladies like a good dancer, so I'll perfect. I'm sure they it. do. I'll perfect it. Don't care. Was, <laughs> and also, there's like professionals on Dancing with the Stars that don't get perfect scores. So what are you gonna like? How are you gonna definitely get a perfect score? Yeah, I will. Stars? Challenge accepted. <laughs> Would you rather be forced to listen to the same ten songs on repeat for the rest of your life, or be forced to watch the same five movies on repeat for the rest of your life? Ten songs. Ten songs. Yeah. Yep. I can pick ten just bangers. Yeah. To listen to. Would you rather go without shampoo for the rest of your life or toothpaste for the rest of your shampoo. life? Shampoo. Shampoo. Hundred percent. Yeah. I'm already on borrowed time. I can't go without. Here. I can't go without toothpaste for a day. Yeah. Right. That's the worst feeling. Yeah. Would you? This is kind of an interesting one. Would you rather be a millionaire or live in the world of Harry Potter? Millionaire. Millionaire. Wait, would a, I would I be I, a would I be a wizard? Because if I'm a wizard, I might pick yeah. Harry Potter. I've never seen one Harry Potter Neither movie. Have I. My da I, my daughter's obsessed with it. So I'm a, I'm pretty. I'm, I, I am an educated Harry Potter mind. Okay, okay educate us. Yeah. But here's the thing: if I get to be, if I'm a Muggle, okay, that's a that's a real that's a regular person, a non magic person. If I'm a Muggle, I want nothing to do with Harry Potter because then you're like. You're like a midget in the NBA. It's like you can see the All magic. These wizards around. are flying yeah. around, and you're right. just some petty muggle. Exactly. And but if if but if you have magical powers, you're you're a wizard. I well, want. I want all. I'm let's all. just say you because a millionaire. You know, is it a million bucks or a millionaire? It says be a millionaire or live in Harry Potter. So I feel like if you're a millionaire, you get to be a wizard in Harry Potter. Okay, uh, I'm going with wizard. Right, because then I could be a billionaire. I'll just print money. Exactly. I mean, I don't. But wanna... you're in some weird world. I'll be. I'll I'm be a millionaire can, here. Wait, 
can I move to like if I live in the Harry Potter world? Can I like live in like a certain like area? Like we live in Minnesota, where it's like normal people. No, Minnesota's like, not in Harry Potter. No, but see, see, the thing is, is about Harry Potter is you can have like an invisibility cloak and go places. You just cover yourself up and you're invisible and you can steal all the cheddar you want. To be honest with you, I think I might be a millionaire because I'm not trying to do all the Dumbledore. Yeah, no, nonsense. I'm just going to be nice rich Dumbledore as hell. Reference. I'm going to be rich so as hell here. Okay. Yep. All right. Would you rather live in the world of Star Wars or cure a rare form of cancer? Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna gonna, I'm gonna cure cancer. Yeah, because I've I've not seen one episode of Star or whatever. Yeah, but you're in Star you're flying Wars. through space, Princess Leia. Planets blow up in that. In cure that cancer. All they're gonna do is they're gonna give you an award. You're gonna be yeah, but you're gonna be known as the guy who cured cancer. Right, right. but did, there's no money attached to it. Well, there could be. I mean, I'm I'm paying. There's definitely if money. Oprah it doesn't say that. there is. If Oprah wants to interview why? me, it's gonna cost you, Oprah. Right. Which cancer? I can write a book. Pick one. Yeah. Breast cancer. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in. I want to do that one. When you die, when you die, oh, would you rather? They'd have, be lining up. Would you? When you die, would you rather have your credit card statement or your Google search history released? Credit card statement for oh, sure. Yes. Hundred per hundred thousand million trillion. <laughs> Nobody would, needs to see that. Would you rather be allergic to chocolate or allergic to smartphones? Chocolate. Chocolate. Yeah. I like chocolate, but I can go without it. I can go without it. I haven't been able to go without my phone for this episode. Uh, (laughs) Would you rather have your seamless account hacked? Which I don't know what the seamless account is. No idea what that is. Let's look that up quick. Yeah. Uh, Let me look on my smartphone to see what the seamless (laughs) account is. Achoo! I don't need I don't need chocolate for this one. Sign up for seamless. Here we go. Let's pull this up on the screen. Direct access to B2B. Business, business to business. Makers. They must have made this list. Yeah. How can we? Yeah, they're like, oh, everybody's going to look us up. We're trying to right. get traction. Yeah, maybe there's a podcast. So that's gonna what's talk the about other one? Because I doubt it's that. And then it's right. It says your hacked. seamless account hacked and all the details made public. Ooh. Or have all of your files and folders filled with porn. I'd rather, so this, have, I'd rather have my files filled with porn. Then I can yeah. just I don't know what I don't know what this whole seamless thing is. Anyway, would you rather play Pokemon Go in real life or The Last Guardian in real life? The Last Guardian. What is that? I That's the is that the Guardians of the Galaxy thing? No. Nope. Okay. No, I don't know. I don't know what it is really, but I'm, I'll I just, pick anything other than Pokemon. Yeah, that's kind mm-hmm. of I've seen going those with. weirdos driving around. They got their you know, they're literally on their phone like in a field or at a yeah, park. And it's like you're looking for a fishing bobber. Right, it's the dumbest phone. thing ever. So um, no, I don't want to be involved right. in that. Yeah. Next up, would you rather have your viewing, your Netflix viewing history made public, or your Spotify listening history made public? And I'm going to adapt this. Would you rather have to defend your guilty pleasure on Netflix that you watch, yeah, there you or go. would you rather have to defend your s- s- guilty pleasure song you listen to on Spotify? I'd pr- probably watch. I'd probably listen to some things I'd have to defend more yeah. than what I watch. So I'd rather have my Netflix released. Yeah. I'm, yeah, because the only thing I watch on Netflix are things other people told me to watch. Right. Right. I, yeah. I'm, Shania I'm, Twain, I feel like a woman. Yeah. You know, <laughs> somebody sees that and it's yeah. like, okay. <laughs> so, Greg, you're still into the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> I, I have to say I'd rather have my Spotify public because I feel like there's nothing... Yeah, but you're a DJ. you're a DJ, right? Yeah, everyone knows. Okay, well, yo, yeah, hey, I need this. I'm a yeah, DJ. Exactly. You can just refer to the DJ card for everything. Where's my Netflix? Like, if my girl's watching my Netflix, I've got like fucking just random continue watching cheer and whatever. I'm like, I'm not trying to defend all this. Gilmore thing. Girls, like somebody hacked it. Are, are we buried? <laughs> we- I shared it with Mike. I swear. <laughs> are we burying the lead of this entire episode? Uh, Did you notice that Tevin just referred to someone as his girl? Oh yeah, it's it's boo! I'm a, I'm a grown, I'm a grown up now. Wow, you're, you're taken. Congratulations, <laughs> wiped up. Would you rather be in a real life version of The Walking Dead or a real life version of Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones. I was gonna say you already talked about how you would have been dead in. Well, walking. no, I don't. I don't want zombies everywhere, like flying drag. You know, I'd go with Walking Dead just because. Game of Thrones, if I was in that world, it would confuse me because 
it's changing every freaking day or every episode. That show's so great. Oh, I know it's great, but I wouldn't be able to keep I up. I could survive there. Give yeah. me a sword and fight. I mean, I know who the zombies are. Battling. Zombies. Stay away from them. I'm going to go with Walking Dead just because, again, I have not seen one episode of Game of Thrones. GOT. Wow. And you I'm, should get I'm on wa- that. I wanted to start watching it, but then everybody was like, oh, my gosh, how have you not watched it? you got to watch it. I was like, okay, screw you guys. I'm not watching it. Oh, see, I, I am like that with stuff, too, but don't ruin it. It's the best show ever. <laughs> I'll, I'll check it out. It's so good. All right, we've got two left. Would and you Khaleesi, rather- you get to see her naked <laughs> numerous times. <laughs> Would you rather be permanently banned from Tinder or be permanently banned from all grocery stores within a five-mile radius of where you live? Oh, I... Well, obviously, I'd rather be banned from Tinder because I couldn't care less. But you know how much that would bother me? I don't weekly grocery shop. I used to. But I go grocery shopping like four or five times a week because it's like on my way home because I have like four grocery stores within um, two miles of me. I couldn't I couldn't live without that. So if we swap out Tinder and say, would you rather be permanently banned from gas stations or grocery stores within five miles of your house? Well, ga- oh, gas stations. Grocery stores I'd rather be banned from. But you don't need to take Tinder out for me. I'm a single man. <laughs> and I live in Faribault. So <laughs> the uh, hot commodities of grocery stores, you know, I can travel outside of five miles to go grocery shopping and, and still swipe. Yeah, I couldn't do I could do gas stations <laughs> because I tra- I drive so much. I'm, I very rarely use no, gas stations within I, five miles of my house. Uh, no, I do all the time. I just did this morning. So, would you rather have a hacker's swoop? Would you rather have a hacker swoop in and publicize all the selfies you've taken in the past year without filters or have your e- personal emails hacked? Uh, you can hack my email. You can hack both. First off, we're dudes. Yeah. So we're not, you know, speaking of Tinder, you know, all the women <laughs> use <bad>. these filters <laughs> and it's like, where are you for real? Yeah. You know, you got like all ages, like a, a pretty 25 year old girl uses filters and then a 45 year old woman uses them it's like i don't even know what I, i've never used a filter in my life well girls do it because yeah. it makes them like look different and better yeah oh yeah i know why i just right. but to it's, me it's like i ain't swiping if you got it yeah and because it ain't you and speaking of personal emails being hacked i know it wasn't on the run sheet but how about the stones on john gruden for now suing the nfl oh that is awesome saying, that came why? out after i made the topics Good for him. Yeah. Dude, first say why hey, why out of all these six hundred and fifty thousand were mine the only one leaked and it was during our season to fucking derail me? Like I need I need answers. Do you, what do you think is gonna be the fallout from him suing the NFL? I think there's gonna be some sort of I honestly think there's gonna be some sort of undisclosed compensation because I don't think the NFL wants to disclose the other five hundred thousand or whatever, however many it is. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they want this to be a news topic. No, civil civil lawsuits rarely go to court. Yeah. They always settle. And the NFL wants to make this go away as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. And he's just trying to stir it up. So, yeah, I think they're just going to And he's like, got a good point. Take your $100 million back, you yeah. bastard. Oh, he's got a great point. Yeah. 650,000 emails? Yeah. And you wait eight months to leak mine so you can fire me collusion yeah and he's and he john gruden can just say to goodell or whoever you do realize from the time you got my first email to current day we have everything going on with the washington football team which is what where this all came from you have colin kaepernick right you have ray rice all these other things that came up that people were probably saying things that they don't want out in the open so i'm guessing that right now other GMs, head coaches, players, everyone. I think that they're passing the hat around and be like, how much does he want to go away? Right. <laughs> passing around the hat like it's collection at, <laughs> at church. <laughs> Everybody you... contribute to the John Gruden shut the fuck up fund. <laughs> Which is what they should call it. Oh. All right. Well, we'll put a wrap on the show with GBG's final thoughts. Okay, so my final thought for this week is a challenge. And here's my challenge. The uh, Yesterday afternoon when I text Mike and... Matt and Tevin and said, we're doing a show. I'm in. Started thinking about my GBG final thought. And nothing came to mind right away, which became my GBG final thought challenge. It's okay to have nothing. You know, and here's my point. You don't always have to respond to everything. You don't always have to be part of a conversation. Some of the most intellectual people in the world shut up and listen. 
every time something comes up, and whether it's politics or whatever, we're on a podcast. Mike comes up with four or five topics, then we have different segments. What we don't talk about are things that we don't feel like talking about. If you're in a conversation with five people and I address person A, person B doesn't need to respond every time. Sometimes silence is golden. That's all I got. Yeah, Tevin. Your person B. <laughs> ah, episode 75 in the books. Happy staycation. We're going to be on vacation for a couple weeks. We'll see you then. And Come the champ will be crowned. Have a great Thanksgiving. Have a great weekend. Twist out. Sports with a twist, no script. No script Legends no coming script. through on the guest list. Let's get it. TC, Minnesota, land of the lakes. Boo, Green Bay, that's all I gotta say. Yelling skull with the woes, you know we don't.